Good to see. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I enjoyed the morning this far and had a good meal and all of that. And now we hopefully we can help you know, feed dine on a little of God's Word. Amen. Uh, I read a lot uh, in my lesson, but uh, most of the time uh, that's the most sure thing I can do. Amen. I know God's Word is true. And, uh, Amen. Sometimes I I may go astray and say something and not even realize I said it. But anyway, I uh, ask you to pray for us this morning as we try to uh, read some familiar scriptures to you. And of course, the whole Bible is familiar with you after you study for a few years. And uh, so we want to go to the book of Mark this morning in the fifth chapter. <clears throat> ask that you uh, uh, pray for us again. And so in verse one, we will. We will start our lesson, we would like to give you a little bit of background on this on this lesson that we're going to study this morning, and, and we see that Jesus had been uh, with, the, with the disciples, and he had, he had given a lot of information con concerning uh, the things of the world and what was going on by parable, and a lot of them they didn't understand, but he called him off to one side and, and he said uh, uh, this is what it means and he said I don't tell this to everybody I don't speak I speak in parable because uh, I want it not known all but to you that you may uh, understand it and that you may pass it on and so he he's told them all this and so he said that in verse 33 of the uh, of chapter the chapter preceding this he said, and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were come alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So we, he gave them a clearer explanation of what he was saying, and there's a lot of this in the parables. If you study it and restudy it and run reference on it, you'll get a blessing out of this world. But now in, in verse one of thirty of uh, chapter five, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadareans, and this is a familiar, like I said, a while ago, familiar scriptures concerning uh, uh, a man that was possessed, mm -hmm. and he was possessed to the point that uh, he couldn't control himself, and he was possessed to the point that he couldn't have no friends or anything like this. And then evidently he was very, very strong uh, uh, with the help of the devils. Right. We're going to see these things as we study this. But in this, we see in this chapter here, there is five, four different ways that, uh, that the Lord has showed his power and that he has encouraged them and really opened the eyes of the apostles. And here back prior to that the parables that he spoke to them, he was getting them ready to receive these other things that they seen. So he said here uh, in verse 2, and when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him a man, met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, first of all, the demons had complete con uh, uh, hold on him. Right. And they they were they were making him move. They were talking for him. In this, we'll see. And they had done all these things. And as we read here, we'll see that he had broke chains that they mm -hmm. tried to bind him with. And so this is this is something that he wanted the disciples to see how that the evil spirits has such a great influence and a great power concerning a person that is. Uh, not not uh, serving the Lord, and we'll see here that they were they were very they were very uh, uh, strong. But the thing that impresses us and me and you it should be that when Jesus came on the scene, they knew who He was. Right. Amen. And this is the saying this morning, and, and and we this morning that are are troubled with these spirits in us are troubled by the actions of things that happen in our life and our mind uh, don't want to focus in the right way and wants to focus on worldly things. Listen, 
It's help. It's a help through the for the for the devil. The devil is doing these things. But listen, there is a great help. Amen. There is one this morning that they know to leave alone. And I can speak for myself. I'm that person's ch uh, child. I'm I'm the brother of Jesus. Amen. And I'm the son of God. And the Holy Spirit lives within me, and so I can I can depend upon the Lord when when all things gets bad and when the when the when the the devil gets to working in me, I can I can turn it over to the devil. So this is this is what he wanted the disciples to see, and this is something this morning that we all need to understand. He says, and after he the man come to him with 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 an unclean spirit, who had who had his dwellings among the tombs. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine living in a graveyard, living right. in a place where there's nothing but dead? Well, that's a, that is a picture of a lost person. He's living among the dead. And of course, where his spirit has not been brought to life, been saved, so he's, he's living in a, 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 a place of the dead. So he says, because that he had been often bound in verse four with fetters uh, and chains, and the chains had been pl plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could they any man tame him. So he was he was out of control. Right. He was he was in in a, in a shape where that he couldn't help himself. And this morning. Uh, think about this as we study this that man represents a lost a lost person uh in today's society that cannot help himself he can't do nothing for himself he can't ha he can't be baptized and have himself uh, his soul saved he can't do works and have himself say he can't do nothing for himself yeah. but the but the lord jesus christ can come in and, and do this work for him so he said here in verse five and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones now i and i'm assuming that the crying was because maybe of his condition but i know this and that him cutting himself with stones and out there in the cold and stuff would, would cause anything to cry. So he said, but when, verse six, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. You bet. Now listen, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by, by God that thou torment me not. Now this man in himself, was not able to say that to Jesus. He did not, he didn't know him, he hadn't seen him, he's been out there in the tomb, but listen, bless your heart, those devils knew him. Right. And they they encouraged him to run towards Jesus and they wanted to find out what Jesus was doing there and what his, what his reason was for there. And so this is, he says here, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee, by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, talking to the spirits, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And, the, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion. He's talking to, the, he's talking to this spirit. And he's asking, he said, and what is your name? And he said, Legion. And for we are many. Notice this man had more than one in him. He was, and, and of course, they, I'm sure they were around everywhere, but in this man, he was filled with these, these spirits. Right. Notice, it, 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 it's such a bad condition to be in. And he said in verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country or out of the place where they were at. And so there, now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. Now, the Jew did not want to fool with the hogs. Right. But now listen, what the ones that the, the ones that saw this thing, the ones that found out about this man being at his right mind and sitting at the Jesus' feet when it was all with these people on these hogs. 
And he said, Hear it. Now there were not, there was nine to the mountain, a great herd of swine feeding, and all, and all the devils besought him. All of the devils that was in him besought him, saying, Send us into this swine that we may enter in, unto, into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. Now here we see the authority of Jesus Christ and how that he has the authority for the, <laughs> for the hogs to receive them and for him, them to enter into them hogs. So he's got the authority, and these, these, these devils knows it. And listen, when you get to thinking about what, what these demons are, they're fallen angels, mm -hmm. and once upon a time they were in heaven. Mm -hmm. And they knew then about the Son of God, and they knew all about it. But they followed Lucifer to the earth, and uh, uh, and in and, and his attempt to overpower God. And so they still knew who Jesus was, and that's the reason why that they said this unto him. And it says in verse <clears throat> latter part of thirteen, it says, "And the herd run violently down a steep place into the sea." They were about 2,000 and were knit and were choked in the sea. And so there were several, several hogs here. And they that, here's the part I want you to see. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And, when, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had his and had the legion sit, sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Amen. They were afraid, uh, uh, and and you know, you would think you would think that they see him like he was. Why were they afraid? Right. Well, they were afraid. I think because one thing they seen the power of Jesus, mm -hmm. and other things the herd of swine was on their minds mm -hmm. because you listen to what they said in verse 16 and they saw it and told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray or ask him to depart out of their coast and when he was come into the ship he that had had been possessed with the devil pray him that he might be with him now these people they they asked jesus to go out and get out of their country they right. didn't want him to do nothing else because listen and they might have known some other farmers that had hogs i don't know if it was that or if they knew some other uh people that would would have these devils but anyway they were worried more about losing their 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 herd of swine and so they asked him, said, you just go because we don't care about the people that are possessed with, with the devils. And listen, that's the world for you this morning. People, the world does not care about how a man is possessed with devils, whether or not his soul is saved or whether or not. The world does not care. Right. And listen, this world is getting worse and worse and worse. And so we just need to... to uh, Ask the Lord to help us and strengthen us. And when when we need this help, we need it. And so we can pray to him that he would help us with this. And so in verse 19, I'm going to show you something here. How be it Jesus suffered him not, and, 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 the, and he asked him to, to let him follow. And, and how be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, <clears throat> And tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath a and hath compassion on thee. Amen. So here, the Lord Jesus would not let him follow him. He said, "No, I don't want you to follow me this time. But you go and tell your people about this." He was in such a shape. He was in such a critical shape. His people knew about this. And listen, this miracle needed to be told and retold. Amen. And listen, I believe this man went on. And so he says here in verse 20, and he departed and began to publish in the, the, the capitalist 
how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Amen. And so we see what a miracle has happened here, and, and remember these things that we read here, because I want to read something else to you, concerning another miracle that he done, which this, this book, this chapter is about four miracles that Jesus done. So in verse 21, and when Jesus was passed over again, again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there come up one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name, and when he saw him, he fell down at his feet, and he besought him greatly, saying, My daughter, my little daughter, lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now this Jairus was a, uh, a, a man that worked in the synagogue. He was a ruler or a layman who they uh, used to help clean the church and all this. And more than likely, he had seen or heard Jesus, and uh, heard about Jesus through others about the miracles that he'd done because he come to Jesus and asking him just to lay their, their hands on him. And that was a type of uh, what the Jew did, just lay their hands on him. Mm -hmm. And so he said here uh, in uh, verse 24, And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And so we see this crowd following Jesus, and Jesus is trying to get to this little girl to, to touch her and heal her or heal her. And he says... And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, she comes into this crowd, and you, we know the story, but I wanna, I wanna redo this and, and show you how great of things that Jesus was doing here. And she had this issue of blood for 12 years, mm -hmm. and she went to these physicians, these doctors, and they evidently took all of her money and didn't do her no good, so listen. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years uh, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, better but rather get, got worse. She was not, and she was not, nothing, she had and nothing, and was nothing better but rather got grew worse. Get this out, man. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Amen. Well, she said, and here's her faith, here's the thing. She, she had heard about Jesus and something, but she said, if I may but touch his clothing, I shall be whole. And you know, people, that's, that's great, that's great uh, faith. Amen. And, and, and you know, uh, Jesus speaks so much, uh, if you, if, if, if you have a, a faith of a grain of mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And she said, and she'd been sick for 12 years, and she said, if I can just get through this crowd and touch his garment, I'll be healed. And so here, in, in verse 29, and straightway, uh, and verse 28, and she said, if I can touch him but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched me? And you know, I was thinking as I was reading this, who touched me? And there's a song I used to sing a lot, somebody touched me. And you know, she touched Jesus and was healed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the same thing, Jesus, Jesus comes to us and speaks to our hearts uh, through the Holy Spirit. And listen, that, that touch goes both ways. Listen, we, we touch him through our prayers and all this, and he touches us through his faith and grace and, mm -hmm. and God. So listen, there's got to be a connection between me and Jesus, or Jesus and me, in order for us to, to receive this power, because he says here, who touched my clothing? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And it's sort of like, you know, the spirit 
and, and the scripture says, it goeth where it listeth, and Amen. it heareth out the sound thereof, and cannot tell whence it come and where it goeth. He said, who touched me? Mm -hmm. And he said, here, and she, uh, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Amen. And he said unto her, Daughter, listen to this. Thy faith, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plagues. And you know this morning, why in this world would anybody get in their mind that I've got to do works? Hmm. I've got to be baptized. I've got to, I've got to do this to, for my neighbor. I've got to do this in order to be saved. He, it's not what we do that we're baptized. It's because of what we've done that we're baptized. And it's the same way with uh, uh, the works that we try to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, be, it's not to keep our salvation, but it's because Jesus Christ <coughs> saved us Amen. and gave us a, a, a life eternal. And here... He says here, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And listen, now he's on his way. He's on his way to Jairus' house. While he yet spake, there came from the rulers of the synagogue how certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Amen. Here we go with faith again. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James, and John the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the rulers of the synagogue, and seeing the tournament, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Amen. Again, remember what Jesus told Mary about Lazarus. Uh, that was in some words. He's he's sleeping. He told his he told his apostles, said, "We've got to go and awake him." And they kept on. He said, "He's dead." Mm -hmm. But he said. He can, he's, we're going to go and wake him up. And so here, in, in, in this verse here, in the next verse, uh, you know how discouraging it was to the parents of that ch child and how awful it was because Jairus, I'm, I'm sure, had heard about Jesus' miracles that he'd done and how the things that was doing. And in verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them out, all out, he got rid of that old vile devil. Mm -hmm. Those old devils that was like in the uh, the uh, man in the tombstone in the, to in the graveyard, they were there too. They were there and they wanted to interfere. And listen, a haughty, haughty heart can damage a service about as much as anything in this world. Amen. And here he said, he said, I'm going to let you guys go. You people go on outside because he he didn't say it, but within him, he didn't want any, any kind of interference there. And so he said, but they laughed him to scorn, but he, but when he had put them out, all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and in, entered into where the damsel was lying. So he's got... The, the mother and the father, all of them. And so there's no Holy Spirit. There's no nothing there. Of course, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have kept him from doing this. But the thing of it was, it would have lessened probably Jairus and them's faith in him. And so they were a hindrance to him. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tala Kama, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of age of twelve, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. Amen. And he charged them straightway that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given to her to eat. Now, I want to show you something this morning. 
in the other one that the one that the, that the man that was in the tomb he asked he asked if if he could follow him and Jesus said no you go home and so listen I think this morning that that as Jesus had the, the, the disciples to write these words down Every man, every man, or that 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 is called of the Lord, or has has different jobs. Everyone that's healed has different jobs to do in their lifetime. It's not all go out and preach the gospel. It's not all go visit the poor or or whatever. But listen, we all have our calling. We all Amen. have the things. Uh, uh, our desires and all of this and, and and Jesus has he has given us the opportunity to be a witness for him he's given us the opportunity to be a comfort to some he's given us a witness to go go to our brother and sisters and some into the foreign countries where that we don't know anybody but listen this is to me is one of the things why that he said to to the man in the tomb that come out of the tomb uh, he said you go home and talk to them people, your, your, your loved ones, and tell them about this. And then he told his daughter, he said, uh, 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 told the man, the, the Jairus, he said, uh, uh, you, you, uh, you don't go. You don't, I mean, you, you stay in. He told one to go and one to stay. I'll put it that way. And listen, there's something else I want to show you too, if I can find it here. Right quick was a blessing to me. Uh, and, uh, here in verse, I believe it's uh, 5, chapter 5. I want to read this. I think I'm writing this. It might help the lesson just a little bit. 5, 18. That's what I got here. All right. I'll get there. Just bear with me. 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth shall pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do the and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And so this, to me, is one of the things that he said, who here, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I think this is one of the reasons why that he brought this in, because listen, you don't want to try to do something to be a, a help to Jesus. I'll put it this way. And it, it not be the right way. You want to follow the leadership of the Lord. Yeah. And, and that goes not only for, for pastors or preachers, but that, listen, that goes for everybody that's a church member that's been saved. Listen, the Lord has a path for you to follow. Amen. And, 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 and only, only He knows. But you need to ask His uh, uh, permission or need to ask, ask Him each day what you would have what he would have you to do and lead you and guide you in this because there's all together two different things here in this where he told one to stay and one to go and uh and, and i think that this would draw us closer to the lord and help us to understand what is happening in our life because sometimes we don't understand when bad things gets in our way and uh we may be out of the, the leadership of the Lord, or we might it might need to have that to for a miracle. We don't know, but the thing of it is, we need to we need to ask the, the leadership of the Lord in, in everything that we do because it's most important to to be uh, being in, in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, these are some of the things that I've seen in the in this, and it's a it's a great. It's a great message here if you get it and study it real close about the different things, how that Jesus uh, uh, done what he did in the way that he did it, and he stopped. He had time for the woman that touched him. He had time for it. And so, listen, he's right on time. 
He's, Amen. He's right on time. He's right on time. And, and is Donna saying that song four days late? No. He's never late. He's right on time. So thank Amen. you all so much Amen. for that.